Hello and welcome to another edition of Talkin' Tunes. I am your host, Frank Walsh. Now folks, in keeping with the tradition that I've always tried to maintain, I am sitting here today with two gentlemen who are going to entertain you in a little while with some great singing and some great guitar work. And if you take a good look at these folks, I'm sure that you have seen them around because they have played everywhere and they have played with anyone. <laughs> And they're going to tell you a little bit about this story in just a minute. So it is giving me a great pleasure to introduce to you my friend Bean LeFay, the Thank old you. rocker. Thank you, Frank. And nice his uh, bandmate and friend Jerry Perm. Jerry, Jerry Gorham, I'm sorry. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Welcome Pleasure to, to the show, here. boys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. With You're welcome. Show. Bean, we talked about this uh, a month or so ago, you know. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been looking forward to it. You know, you, you had asked me when I first started playing, and I started playing in the early 60s. I was going to say, when you first started playing, I think I was still in diapers. <laughs> Well, that's why they call me the old rocker. Uh, yeah. And I tell you, there were not too many people on the show older than I, so uh, this is kind of a pleasure for me. <laughs> well, I'm 75 years old and still going strong. The first band I played with was in the early 70s, Miles Connor, the president of rock and roll. Around here, yeah. And I was with that band for, oh, more than 10 years, in and out of prison. We recorded in Walpole State Prison with that band. <laughs> But uh, you're playing all over the place now. I mean, you know, why don't you rattle off some of the bands that you played with over the years and, and some of the highlights over the last uh, well, 40 the, years? The band, Sleeping Monkey Band, is, is my primary band. Mm -hmm. And we started that band in 1985. I had got out of prison again. I was a drug addict and uh, use of drugs, uh, abuse, uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I got caught up in that. You're the one who coined that <laughs> phrase? <laughs> no, it's been around for many years. <laughs> but, you know, because of my addiction, I ended up in prison. Uh -huh. And um, I started playing music there. Mm -hmm. Then I got out, and uh, I wanted to play music, but I was afraid to go into the bar rooms. I didn't want to get caught up in the lifestyle. Again. Uh -huh. So I was in a 12-step recovery program, mm -hmm. and I met people just like myself who uh, were recovering addicts, and wanted to play music, so we formed a band. Everybody in the band in the beginning was in recovery. And we called it the Sleeping Monkey Band. And the reason we called it that was, we figured if you can't get the monkey off your back, at least you can put it to sleep. I love the way you tell that story. You've told me that before, a great story. Well, that's kind of how that started. And uh, you know, we played, we started playing all over, and then we kind of morphed in the, uh, the late 80s, we morphed into a band called Against All Odds. Okay. We were a big band, seven pieces, had two truckloads of equipment. We were playing all over New England. We played for the Governor's Alliance, played for Michael Dukakis when he won the presidential nomination, mm -hmm. and we played for the Hells Angels. So we went from, <laughs> from, from one extreme to the other. And we've been playing music for a long time. Good, good, good for you. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about your history in a minute. So. Mr. Jerry, why don't yes, you look sir. into that camera and uh, give a little bit of history about you? Well, my name is Jerry Gorham Jr. I've been playing guitar, well, for 35 years. I've been playing in front of people for about 30 years, since the mid-80s. And uh, play guitar and I sing, have a great time. I enjoy working with this guy. He kind of brought me out of the mothballs a little bit, because I too have been playing for not nearly as long as Bean, but quite mm -hmm. some time. Mm -hmm. Had a family, took a little bit of time off. I'd go to these open mics, that's where I met him. He said, hey man, I need a singer and a guitar player, and you are both. So let's put things together and see what we can do. So nice. We've been playing together for about a year or so and doing a lot of gigs, and it's been working out great, having right. a lot of fun. Great. Playing blues and, you know, blues and classic rock, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. I know, I mean, I've seen you guys a few times, and uh, you do some fantastic covers. And, you know, there's one thing about doing a cover, but there's another thing about taking that cover and kind of making it your own. Sure. And I know that the way that you guys do some of these covers is, you know, not like just sticking a CD of the original into the into the machine. You know, you put that sleeping monkey twist on it, and you make sure. it your own, and, yeah. and you have some fun. So, folks, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about where these guys play, but if you want to go out and see a great band and meet two great guys and listen to some great music, Bean and Jerry are the two who you're going to see. Why don't you take a second and uh, talk about some of the other members in your band as well. Okay, I got another member. Our harp player and singer is Bob Rigo. Yep. 
and he's from the South Shore, and he's been playing for quite a while. He used to play with Eddie and the Etzels and quite a few of them. But he's a fantastic harp player. He is. Mm -hmm. He's fantastic. And our, our uh, drummer is Jim Neighbors. He also is a vocalist, and he lives up in the North Shore. And he's been with us for a couple of years. Very cool. And, uh, you know, this band is really great. We have no drama. <laughs> and sometimes that happens, a lot of arguments in bands. Everybody in this band gets along, and we're able to work, to work together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and, you guys are a fun band. I mean, you are a fun band. You know, you get up there, there is no pretense. You, you, you mingle with the people in the crowd, and then you get up, and you just rock and roll. And it's very evident that you have a lot of fun doing what you do. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we're a crowd pleaser, and we you play are. to the crowd. And, uh, you know, we try to play everywhere we can. It's been really tough trying to book gigs, as you know. There's a yeah. lot of good bands out there, and there's we're losing a lot of venues yeah. mm -hmm. to play in. Yeah. So it, it's pretty tough getting gigs, but we try. And it's important, too, out there, and I've said this before for a few folks at home, is that, you know, the only way that this music is going to survive is when people like me and, and Roxanne in the booth and Beverly Kander in the booth today go out and support you guys, right. you know? And it's, it's very important, folks, to go out and go to the venues, listen to live music, and keep it alive. Because as you said, it's, it's getting harder and harder. Oh. A lot of venues are closing, and when you do go out there to get a gig, uh, you have so much competition that you have to bring a little bit more than music to the table in order to get in. We're, I'd like to just, uh, we're doing something different this month. Okay. And we're going to be playing a couple shows in Easton, in one on February the 13th at the Blackthorn Public House. And that's a non-alcoholic event. Yep. And we're going to provide the entertainment for that. Mm -hmm. This is to promote drug awareness and addiction. Mm -hmm. The woman who sponsors this event lost both of her sons to addiction. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Tracy's a good friend of ours, and we've done this show for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to it. Now, I know that, you know, you do have a special mission to go out and help people and help fellow musicians. If someone is watching this or uh, someone hears about this, how would they get a hold of you and reach out to you to, uh, to talk with you, and, and you could guide them? Well, we have, a, we have a Facebook page, and it's a Sleeping Monkey Band on Facebook, and I, I'm not afraid to give out my phone number if somebody needs help. Okay. 781-420-1979. Mm -hmm. Why don't you and, repeat that one more time? Okay. 781-420-1979. Great. And uh, we try to help out anybody that's looking for help. Great. And the monies from these events are going to be going towards uh, uh, recovery homes. Cool. So that's a charitable donation that's going to be given to these places to help promote uh, drug awareness. Cool, cool. Now, uh, we've been talking for a little bit, and I'm sure that the folks at home uh, want to listen to you guys perform and play and sing a little bit. So why don't you uh, take a second to talk about what you're going to be playing? All right, well, I think we're going to do some uh, old blues classic. Which is? Smokestack Lightning. Smokestack Lightning. Yeah. So if you Howlin', guys... Howlin' Wolf. Great. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to be hearing Bean Le Fay and Jerry Gorham. <laughs> Smokestack and lightning Oh, you shine like gold Can you see me cry? Oh, yeah Woo-hoo Smokestack and lightning Where'd you spend last night? Can you see me cry? Oh, yeah. yeah. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Smokestack, yeah, lightning. Can I ride your train? Can you see me cry? Oh, yeah. Woo 
smokestack lightning. Oh, you shine like gold. Can you see me cry? Oh, yeah. Woo -hoo. Suzy Q. Um, everybody knows this one by Credence. Okay. Whoa, Suzy Q. Whoa, Suzy Q. Oh, Suzy Q, baby, I love you. Suzy Q, like the way you walk, like the way you talk, like the way you walk, like the way you talk. Suzy Q. Mine. When will you be mine? When will you be mine? All the time, Suze Q. What, Suze Q? What, Suze Q? What, Suze Q? Baby, I love you, Suze Q. Like the way you walk, like the way you talk, like the way you walk, like the way you talk, Susan Q. Oh, Susan Q. Oh, Susan Q. Oh, Susan Q. Baby, I love you. Oh, 
She broke a needle now, she can't so walk in your dog. Just so walk in your dog. If you don't know how to do it, I'll show you how to walk the dog. Ask my mama for 15 cents. Come on and see those elephants. Got so high, touch the sky. Didn't come back till the 4th of July. Walking your dog. Just a walking your dog. If you don't know how to do it, I'll show you how to walk the dog. How does your god all grow up? Little bells, bitty, bitty, bitty white shells, all nice and neat in a row. Walking your dog, walking your dog. If you don't know how to do it, I'll show you how to walk the dog. tell you guys that was uh that was great you guys were rocking and rolling over there and i'm sure the fans at home are going to enjoy it but uh you touched on a couple of different flavors of music there and um what would you say that your influences are i mean you know jerry you've been around for a long time i mean why don't you give a All little, right, I little, give little a history lot, lesson i gotta give a lot of props to my dad okay okay so he recently passed away god rest his soul amen but he you know it's been 1957 in my house since 1957, if you know what I mean. So Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, The Drifters, this type of stuff was all around me when I was a kid. And then one day, I'm listening to the hi-fi in the living room, in some in point in the 70s, and I hear the screaming guitar, and it's the Beatles doing Revolution. So it's got that Chuck Berry yep, flavor, yep. but it's a little more revved up. And I turn to my dad, I go, Dad, <laughs> what is that sound? He goes, that's electric guitar. Bam, that's the stuff. So I had to get one of those. I, you know, I just was kind of consumed with music from that point forward. And I loved the, the 50s and, and the Beatles and the Stones. So I've just taken all that stuff that I've listened to and enjoyed over the years, and even, you know, bebop, jazz, and what, what have you, in country, yep. and just kind of roll it into my style. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like. I just kind of take the best bits of everything I've heard and use it. And uh, I don't know, I enjoy it. I seem to... Great. And I have a lot of fun with it. Well, it obviously shows. And just listening to you tell that story, I could see the passion oh, behind yeah. those words and oh, where that yeah. influence came no, it's, from. No, it's, it's a real deal, you know? Now, Bean, um, there's a rumor out there that you, uh, <laughs> you actually played at the Last Supper. And, uh, <laughs> you know... Uh, no, he was a bus boy. <laughs> I, 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 was wait, I was waiting the table. Oh, you were the that, waiting the table. Yeah, I was drinking oh, the wine. Oh, oh, drinking oh. the wine for that. But you know. Yeah, you, but why don't you talk a little bit about some of, uh, you know, some of your influences and, and some of the changes that you've seen in music over the years. Well, my influences, you know, I, I started going. My first concert, major concert, was in the mid-50s in Hartford, Connecticut. I went to see Bill Haley and the Comets, oh, wow. the Flamingos. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock rock. Four o'clock rock, <laughs> Blackboard Jungle. Yep. So these were my early influences and certainly Elvis Presley was the king. Yep. You know, and uh, I got to see one of his shows uh, at the Cape Cod Coliseum in the mid 70s. 
And, uh, you know, I had a lot of influences. I actually played with Chuck Berry. You did? In the 70s at the Cape Cod Coliseum. Nice. A member of the band. And that was a, a thrill. But, you know, my, my music has changed over the years, mm -hmm. my likes and dislikes. You know, I was really into Allman Brothers, Government Mule, yep. Rolling Stones. These yep. were more of my type music, what I like, Southern mm -hmm. Rock. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I did a couple of, I wrote a song in, uh, in the 90s, what it was like. It was called Old Rocker, named it after myself. Mm -hmm. And it was what it was like to be in a rock and roll band in the 90s in Boston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And I kind of retired from playing after that. Mm -hmm. I was tired of dealing with promoters. I was tired of dealing with club owners. Uh, I was managing the band. I was booking the gigs and working a full-time job, and I was just burning myself out. Yeah. So I stopped playing for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Didn't touch it. Well, I'm glad that you uh, came out of retirement. I'm sure the folks who have seen you out there rocking and rolling as, you know, the old rocker, they're glad you came out of retirement as well. Now, why don't we take, uh, take a minute or two and talk about some of the venues where you guys play around here. I mean, you know, I know you're a fairly local guy, Jerry, and mm -hmm. being you're a North Shore guy, but you do a lot of stuff around here. I know, you, you know, we've played at a lot of the regular places, Pete's, Next Page, you know, The Riv. Why don't you rattle off some places where you played? Well, we're, we're going to be at the uh, Slap Shots in, in uh, what was that? Rainham. Rainham. In Rainham, okay. Rainham on the 27th of this month in Blackstone Public uh, House. That's not far from here. On the 13th in the, the Knights of Columbus in, in Easton. All and that's local. on the, uh, the 26th. And, uh, you know, I have other, other bookings that I'm working on right now mm -hmm. for March, April, cool. and May. Cool. And, and as we said before, it's getting tough. There's a lot of good bands out there, so the competition is rough. So yeah. we try to be crowd pleasers. You know, you get more people to come see you, it's easier getting a gig if right. you've got a following. Now, I know, Jerry, that you play in some uh, nice jams. Uh, why don't mm -hmm. you talk about some of the uh, some of the jams that you play in, particularly like Players and the Riv? Well, yeah, Players. It, primarily, it all kind of started with me at, at Players and the Riv, because uh -huh. one's on a Saturday, one's on a Sunday. Yeah, and Players is in Rockland, folks. Yeah, we're on VFW Parkway, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yep. And uh, that's Jimmy does a great job with does, organizing John, that jam yeah. and giving everybody a shot to play and putting people together and... Some bands have been formed out of people just going to these jams, and that's kind of what happened with he and I at yep. with the Riviera, but yep. a similar type circumstance. But I encourage people if you're like in between bands, you played for 20 years, you got kids, you don't know what to do, you don't have a band anymore, go to one of these jams like on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon, bring your wife, and you'd be amazed at how much energy and people are there and just having a good time. And, and then you play a couple tunes, you meet a couple friends, you might see some old friends you haven't seen in a while, and uh, you might be able to find other people to play with and, you know, put the old guy band back together. Right. Which I've gotten a ton of enjoyment out of doing, so it's, uh, it's all good. Yeah. It's all very good. And, and just to echo what, what uh, Jerry just said, I mean, pretty much for the past year to a year and a half, the, the bands, the guests, the folks like yourself who have been on this, band, on this show, pretty much evolved from doing exactly what you said, Jerry. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just a regular guy who would go out to the clubs and have the music, and you know, the, the music show that I used to do is a lot different from here, but the people who I've met, the musicians whom I've met, I mean, they're just such a great, vibe. great guys. That's, yeah. how, I, and that's gals. how I met great you, guys, yeah, you know, sure. That's how we met. That's how we met, Great yeah. guys and gals, they come out, they mingle, they talk, one thing leads to another. I mean, next thing you know, they're playing together or mm -hmm. they're making friendships. And I can't, I can't believe the amount of friends and the amount of enjoyment that I've gotten out of doing what you just said. Not to Going mention the talent. The talent, and the talent. The South Shore is just you know, it's, immense. It's unbelievable. This is, this unbelievable. is how I, I found Jerry. My, uh, my lead guitar player and uh, singer had a move, and he, he left the area. And I was looking and just couldn't find anybody. And I went to a jam. I heard Jerry singing and playing, and I says, I got to meet this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of kind of dragged him off into a corner yeah, yeah. and said, listen, you're going to be the one. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be the one. But it, it really worked out. We are compatible. Uh. I also yeah. played in another it works band. So good. Right. It's good. And uh, the other band is Soul Shine Boston. Soul Shine Boston. Soul Shine Boston. Yeah. And we're mostly up in the North Shore. Yeah. You know, we're playing at Sealy's yep. in Lynn. Yep. And, uh, you know, but my primary band is Sleeping Monkey Band. Correct. And well, 
everybody should go to jams. There's a lot of people out there, you know, they're afraid to get up and play in front of people. They play by themselves. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, these jams are very uh, user friendly. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the, the patrons and, and the fans at the, these jams are incredible. Yep. How lot, they support the A lot musicians. of support, yep. Yeah. yep. And you well, don't know how good you are until you go and, and see what everybody else is doing. It's like, oh, I can play these songs with these guys. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's not that intimidating at all. Just go, you know, and just mingle a little bit, and you'll see what it's all about. It's great. Well, well guys, I did tell you that one of the disadvantages of the show is that it's only 30 minutes long and that, uh, <laughs> you know, we are kind of running out of time. Over but time. I personally want to take this opportunity to thank you both, Bean. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, and, right. and Jerry. Thanks a million, Thank Frank. you so Appreciate much for coming on. And as I said, folks, go out and see these people. Support your local musicians. And for Bean and for Jerry, I am Frank Walsh, and as always, tune in and tune on.